Hi everyone and thanks again for joining me. So we just heard the same pitch, middle C, played on a bunch of different instruments. Have you ever wondered why the piano sounds different from a violin or a guitar or a trumpet or anything else for that matter, even if they're playing the same pitch? Right? If somebody plays a piano or somebody plays the same note on a trumpet, you can clearly hear the difference, but it's the same pitch. Why is that? The answer lies in the world of overtones and harmonics. So what's actually happening when we hear a musical note? Well, let's say for the sake of argument that, this, that the top part of this illustration shows a string anchored here and here, and if we set it vibrating, of course it'll go back and forth along its entire length, <clears throat> excuse me, and that will create what we call the fundamental frequency. If we go back to the middle C's that we heard at the beginning of this video, this would be uh, this would be producing that sound of middle C. However, at the same time that it is vibrating back and forth like this, it's also vibrating in a manner represented by this second part of this illustration. It's vibrating along half of its length here and the other half here. Uh, for this part of the vibration um, uh, profile, uh, it's, it's actually not vibrating at all uh, right here, and that's called a node. This part of the vibration and this part of the vibration are causing an additional sound to occur, which is exactly one octave above the fundamental frequency, and that is our first harmonic, or our first overtone. In addition to that, it's also vibrating along one-third of its length, here, here, and here, with two nodes. This is our second harmonic, or second overtone, and that will sound one fifth above this first harmonic. And in addition, there is the third harmonic vibrating in a manner represented here, and the next harmonic here, and here, and here, and there are actually a bunch more beyond that as well. So we have our first, second, third, fourth, and so on, harmonics or overtones. Here's another way of looking at it. If we sound this note, by itself and don't do anything else. At the same time, its first overtone will, will produce this sound, its second overtone will produce this sound, its third overtone will produce this sound, and so on with a whole bunch more. And it even goes beyond this illustration. Okay, the first overtone, as I said before, will be one octave above the fundamental. The second overtone will be a fifth above the first overtone. The next harmonic will be a fourth above the previous overtone, and it goes on from there. The cello happens to be a particularly good instrument to illustrate harmonics. Let's give it a try. What I will do is I'll play a low D natural on this string over here, okay? And the, f the first natural harmonic of that low D will be an octave above it, which should correspond to this string here. The second harmonic of that low D will be a fifth above that, which should be the A. So I will play a nice solid low D natural on this string, and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to see this string vibrating as a result, even though I'm not touching it, or at least I won't be touching it when I, when I play the low D. And uh, I hope this video has enough resolution that we'll also be able to see this A natural also vibrating. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Pretty sure we could see the D natural vibrating, even though I didn't touch it. Let's try it one more time. Well, I hope you could see the A also vibrating, but I think that the, the D was clearly visible. So at the very least, we could see the first natural harmonic, and possibly we could also see the second natural harmonic. So you may be wondering, what has all this got to do with our original question of how these different instruments sound different from each other. Well, let's take a look. Let's start with, let's say, a clarinet. Okay, this, gra this graph shows what a clarinet actually sounds like on a particular pitch. I believe this is the A above concert A. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if that is true, this peak right here represents the how loud that fundamental frequency is sounding, okay? 
Now, if you look at the next large peak, which is presumably its first overtone, you see that, that that peak is actually a little bit higher. And then the next peak is the next overtone. And you see that it has a, uh, a, a, fairly, a, a picture that is fairly uh, representative for that instrument. Let's, let's, let's take a look at another instrument now. That was clarinet. How about a piano? Okay, uh, this is Niddle C. And you see that the general shape and the general pattern of overtones and how loud they are relative to each other is very, very different than that of the clarinet that we just looked at. Let's try another one. How about a violin? Again, very different. You have the, the, you have the fundamental frequency plus a bunch of overtones. And again, the pattern of how loud and soft they are relative to each other, very different than the other two. And so it'll go for, uh, for all the differences from one instrument to the next. By having a better understanding of harmonics and overtones, it can enhance our enjoyment of music. Uh, it can also increase our understanding of how the scale and the Western tonic system evolved. It will also help our understanding of tempered systems, and we'll talk about that some more in a future video. Well, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it educational, and I hope you found it helpful in learning some more about music. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope to see you again next time.